Hello everybody, Joan here again with another short video for you guys. This time around is just a kind of off the cuff video um, about some things I've been thinking about, um, some kind of some situations have kind of made me think about this uh, topic again in, in recent times. And um, I just basically wanted to to record this short video on on what I think is the most important thing um, for freelance linguists, freelance interpreters and translators. And, um, you know, there's, there's many, there's many people out there who are, you know, incredible linguists, incredible, um, talented translators and interpreters, but they're not always terribly successful. And, and, and there's, there's probably many reasons for that. Obviously, uh, you can't pinpoint, you know, um, these two to one single thing, but there's, there's one, kind of common threads that I've noticed a lot in these last 25 years, both when I was working as a senior manager for a translation agency. And, you know, also I, after I, I went freelance, you know, um, more than 10 years ago is something I've kind of noticed as well, um, you know, amongst the freelance community. And the, and these, these common denominator is, is it's a, a frequent lack of respect that interpreters or that not inter just interpreters interpreters and translators that that linguists have for um for the clients or for project managers in agencies now i'm not here to defend uh interpreting and translation agencies there are many good companies out there i'm also acutely aware that there's many more not so good ones uh, and I'm not alien to all the difficulties we're facing in, in the, you know, in the, in the freelance uh, linguist industry. I'm also a freelance linguist and I also encounter, you know, these difficulties. <clears throat> you know, the, the fact that, you know, our rates have been going down for the last 20 years. Um, work security is increasingly more precarious. Um, work is increasingly more competitive. Um, there's what I perceive to be a, a growing lack, a, a, a growing uh, amount of, a growing lack of accountability, um, and willingness to kind of, you know, monitor, you know, these, these, you know, public sector contracts and so on. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here simply to to make an observation. And obviously, this is just, um, you know, my own kind of comments on this situation. Is that, you know, how we respond to that. Uh, is really important and um you know i i've in the last two or three years for example my workload has, has decreased a little bit you know i i was in a situation where my my work volume was increasing year on year for more than 10 years and then suddenly you know it started kind of going down you know opposite th trend and suddenly you kind of start being worried and that start start being offered you know work for lower rates which i'm quite often not very keen to take and so on um and uh, and that can be very frustrating and it can be very, it can be soul destroying and can be extremely stressful if you're in a situation where suddenly you don't have your, you know, enough money to pay your bills at the end of the month and so on. However, nothing justifies being rude and aggressive, uh, you know, towards, you know, other colleagues in the industry, you know, um, and putting things into perspective a little bit, um, quite often the contacts that we have um, as freelancers, the contact we have with an agency are not with senior management. We're, we're quite often in contact with project managers. And you, I can tell you from, from experience that you quite often, not always, but quite often these project managers have got very limited power as to what kind of work they can offer you and, and the kind of rates that they can offer you. Um, so if you offered work that is not worthwhile for you to do, or you think is, I don't know, disrespectful or whatever, um, just politely refuse it and, you know, explain the reasons for doing so if you want. But um, I don't think anything justifies, you know, um, being rude to those project managers. Um, they're quite often colleagues like we are. They're also linguists, um, quite often trying to start a career of their own by maybe going to an in-house project ma uh, management position, not always, but sometimes, um, you know, and they're, they're not idiots, you know, they're, they're, they're quite often very intelligent, very uh, well-qualified people. And 
you know, uh, and it's something I see with a lot of sadness, you know, sometimes, you know, on social media as well, people boasting about cheeky replies that they've sent to um, interpreting companies and so on. You know, you can do that if you want, obviously. Um, um, I, I don't think it's it's the mark of a professional linguist to to be cheeky and disrespectful um, to other people. Um, and, you know, I'm no saint either. I have been in situations where I have made that kind of mistake. Um, not many, but, you know, there's, there's maybe a handful of situations over this, this past 25 years where I've lost my rag a little bit and I said something which I subsequently regretted. Um, and, you know, we, we all make mistakes, you know, and I think the important thing is that we learn from our mistakes, situations as well where um, maybe a police officer or an agent manager or, where, or whoever is trying to do, um, is, is doing a public speech or um, trying to do a presentation to explain a new contract or or a new framework or whatever, and, you know, they're verbally assaulted by freelancers. Um, I think that's, that's sad. Uh, it's demeaning um, and it does not reflect well on us um, and on the interpreting profession. And it's something, it's something that we, sh we should, you know, I condemn. And I think we should all condemn that kind of behavior and situation. It doesn't matter how well qualified you are. If you behave like that, in my opinion, you shouldn't be working as an interpreter or, 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 or translator. Um, and especially as an interpreter where people's skills are so important, you know, it's a people's business. Um, and I've said this many times, you know, it's one thing that we often forget that I have forgotten as well in the past is that this is a people's business. And ultimately, you know, um, you will get work if, you know, if your clients like you, if, if obviously if you're good, but also if the clients like you and if they like working with you and if they don't like working with you, you could be the best interpreter or the best translator in the world. You're not going to get work. And, you know, you're going to struggle in your career and then that sense of anger um, and frustration is just going to get worse. Um, so, yeah, I suppose this is just a short video to kind of appeal to everybody to let's keep this dialogue constructive. And I know it's a, a difficult dialogue we've had in over the past 10 years or so. Um, and I know this the situation for all of us is, is, is difficult um for all sorts of reasons um but let's keep it constructive let's keep it professional um and it's the old chestnut you know if you want to be treated as professionals we have to behave as professionals and being disrespectful and demeaning um to other colleagues in the industry whether they're interpreters or not or whether they're linguists or not um is not the right way to go on about it that's just some what I think, just some thoughts off the cuff here. Um, I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.